get in here and you hit your high crotch, make sure you get this leg and then cut across. See how there is air? I have my, everybody says get your hand behind the knee. If I have my hand behind the knee to cut up to a double, he can still sprawl and extend out my arm. I need to make sure that that outside arm is elbow deep. So now when he goes to sprawl, he can't go anywhere. And I can always lift him and take him to the double. All right? Here's one thing, whenever you get in on a high crotch, if you want to cut to a double, I have, a, I have cardinal rules. Cardinal rule is, as he sprawls right here, I lift with my hips, where you can lift and get your arm across. Height weight position is huge. I want my head higher than him, so I land on top of him, right to here. Now, here's, here's what I'm doing. Shoulder in a solar plexus, in the bottom of his rib cage, all right? Or a solar plexus, either or. I take the knees, I pick them up, place my knee underneath, and I do not squeeze, I punch. I do not squeeze, I punch. By punching, I clamp his knees together and it takes away some strength for him to bridge and I should be able to get my easy cheese three points out of it and get a five point takedown at enough. All right? So, I land here. So here, when he's trying to bridge and stuff like that, I can get my easy cheesy points, all right? And take it from there. That's number one because I see a lot of guys try to take it the other way. If I take it the other way, he might land on top of me. So once I'm in here, if I take him this way, he lands on top of me and he can sprawl and I get extended. So height, weight, position. Your head, your head, and then you lift. You want your head on top right here. And pinch, pinch, pinch. Right now, here's... My philosophy is 99% of my takedowns should go to the back. I want five. I don't want two. I've seen this happen so many times. Guys go out there, boom, take them down, cut them, two, one. Take them down, cut them, four, two. Take them down, cut them, six, three. Second period. The other guy takes down, boom, he cuts them, six to four. Guy gets a shit shot. Guy gets around on top. Oh my God, it's six, six. The guy stops wrestling because it's a time match and they don't know what to do. <laughs> Oh my God, it's Ty. Shut up. If you would have taken him down to his back for five and he gave him one, <coughs> big deal. Take him down again for five, let him go. 10-2, your own business. Take him down a third time, let him go. 15-3. Oh gosh, the guy gets the takedown, it's 15-5. Do you get nervous? Who cares? All that is, is that guy giving you the opportunity to score more points before you pin him. That's all it is. That's the way I look at it. So if you think about it, what comes out your butt? Crap. What is two points compared to five? Crap. Get with the program. Your coaches are sending you out there in a dual meet. How many points does your coach want you to get for the team? No, for the team. How many points does he want you getting on the scoreboard for the team? <laughs> okay, he's a major staller, okay, because he's saying he wants a major decision, okay, and the ultimate in boxing is to knock the guy out, the ultimate in wrestling is to pin your opponent, your job is to pin the guy, and as coaches, we don't care how you do it, but if you only get a major decision, first of all, to me, that's stalling, all right, and you just screwed the team out of two points, now how do you feel? The team just lost by a point, and you couldn't pin your guy. Feel like a heel? Yeah. Whose fault is it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what we want to make sure we do is we're always going for the pin. Now, uh, my philosophy always was I wanted to practice, get as much drilling as I could before I pin the guy. All right. And back then we didn't have this 15 point sissy rule. We were allowed to like really light it up. You know. I mean, there were sometimes, you know, I'd get up at 30, 40, 50 points before I pin the guy. But that way, they would know. They would know. And I know before the semifinals of the NCAAs my senior year, I had to wrestle a guy who was a three-time All-American. He was undefeated, 32 and all. I was undefeated. I heard people stupid enough in the stands going, oh my god, these guys both undefeated. It's going to be a good match. I'm like, oh my god, they must be smoking something. It's not going to be a good match. I mean, I, I felt bad for the guy because he had me. He should have been in the other bracket. He, so that way, he could have made it to the finals. And I remember the guy getting all psyched up. And I walked over to him. I got him on the back. I'm like, dude, man. Get screwed. <laughs> and he sat there and he went like this. 
I know. <laughs> I'm like, you should have been in the other bracket so you can have been in the finals with me. He's like, I know. <laughs> Why did he know? Because the year before, when I had him like 26 nothing, when I stuck him, he didn't really want to avenge that loss right away. He wanted some time to repair. How many guys here have lost a match by one point before? Raise your hand. How many of you wanted to re-wrestle that match right then and there so you can prove that you could beat the guy? Raise your hand. How many of you guys took a, a major whooping at least once in your life? Raise your hand. How many of you guys wanted to get right back out there and get a, a whooping again? Okay, only a couple things for you guys. So good. All right. So that was, that's my point. You want to get as many points as you can before you pin the guy so they know hey, you don't want more of this. All right. So, back to here. Once I get in on this high crotch and I lift, I take, I, I, I lift to get the double, swing on the high weight position, punch, and use his knees underneath. Try and keep your weight here so you get easy, cheesy five points. Any questions? Where'd your partner go?